Hello friends, a great welcome to my channel. Today we will talk about the Harry Ape, the very famous American play and we will know about the writer Eugene O'Neill as well. Please take down all the notes and these notes will really be helpful for any of your examinations, be it objective or subjective. A very great achievement, Nobel Prize goes to his credits, Eugene O'Neill, born 1888 and died 1953. Russian playwright Senten Chekhov, Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen, and Swedish playwright August Strindberg. These people are known to popularize realism and the credit to make uh, realism popular in America goes to Eugene O'Neill. In 1920, he received the first major success with his play Beyond the Horizon, which won him his first Pulitzer Prize. He has won Pulitzer Prize for the three times. He won his second Pulitzer Prize two years later in 1922 for his play Anna Christie. So, as I was telling you, he has won the Pulitzer Prize three times. First for Beyond the Horizon, his beginning play, his starting play, and after his death, he also received the award for his best known as and most often produced work on the stage, Long Day's Journey into Night. It was published five years after his death and had its world premiere at the Royal Dramatic Theatre in Stockholm, Stockholm, which is the capital of Sweden. He was the person who introduced psychological and social realism to the American stage and that is the reason he is called father of American drama. Often regarded as the father of American drama, Nobel laureate Eugene O'Neill helped drama become a legitimate form of American literature. And as I told you, his Pulitzer Prize winning tragic masterpiece such uh, as Long Journeys into Night 1956 introduced psychological realism and expressionism theater to American stage for the first time. Let us talk about the Hairy Ape. 1922 ka expressionist play hai. Expressionism plays kaise hote hain. That also we will discuss by American playwright Eugene O'Neill. And it is about a horrid, careless labor known as Yank. Yank, whom we can call to be the protagonist of the play as well as he searches for a sense of belonging or identity in a world controlled by the rich. We can also understand this play uh, from Marxist point of view, but at present we will talk about expressionism. The term expressionism is a German phenomenon initially referred to paintings. Subse pehle expressionism paintings ke liye use kiya gaya tha. It was used occasionally during the 19th century and was popularized in 1901 by the French painter J. A. Harvey. Let us read a formal definition of expressionism. Expressionism is a form of composition and stage craft through which the wishes, fears and obsessions of the human psychology are made audible and visible. Everything that a human is going through in a very realistic way that is presented on the stage that the audience spectators come to know what the character is going through, what kind of fears, what kind of obsessions the person is experiencing at the present. In the early, early decades of 20th century, they developed a modernist moment in drama and theater in Europe, principally I'll say in Germany. This is known as Expressionism. So we can say Expressionism did start uh, principally in Germany if we talk about drama. And later this moment got developed in United States as well. Let us go for scene one. In scene one, we are shown some labors who are working on a ship dock. At the beginning of the play, Yang and some other firemen, also known as coal feeders, are all confined to a single small bunk kind of room. Yang quickly demonstrates his standing with the group as, a, as the men are drinking. The other men who work on the ship all uh, consider Yang to be the leader and respect him. For example, the men rush to give Yang two beers when he asks for one. Ek beer hi maangte hai, sab log daur padte hai unko do beers dene ke liye. In addition, when Yang disagrees with a statement made by any of the other men, they quickly back down to avoid a physical fight with the much bigger, much stronger Yang. So whenever uh, we see that there is some debate going on 
anyone who is ever uh, opposing gang always comes to his favor later on they want to avoid any kind of fight maybe with him and there are two more people paddy and long p a d d y paddy and long l o n g there are two more fire fighters who have got a, a you know bigger role in comparison to other fire fighters before working on a coal powered ship paddy describes his experience working on a different ship paddy describe karte hain ki wo pehle kisi aur ship par kaam kiya karte the and maybe he says that his that experience was better long attributes the miserable working conditions of the crew to the evil capitalists who ride on the ship that yang can be other firemen powered by shoveling coal long bhi kehte hain ki we are the one who are working hard itni garmi mein hum log koila dalne ka kaam karte hain is coal shovel ke andar and yang says ki you do not respect your work yang reiterates that he is the muscle behind the ship we are the one who are running the ship this is what yang thinks and that he is what makes the ocean liner move hum hi to is ship ko move karwate hain to hum sabse zyada important hai we are more important than the capitalists he disapproves of paddy and long's lack of loyalty to the ship yang ko apna kaam bahut pasand hai apne kaam ke liye bahut loyal hai wo and he disregards anyone who says that this work is not good then comes scene 2 scene 2 is completely opposite to the previous scene in the previous scene we got to see the shabby workers and in this scene we see very uh, clean kind of environment and a girl completely clad in white dress mildred this girl's name is mildred mildred douglas and her aunt mildred douglas mildred douglas is steel trust's president's daughter Mildred, the daughter of a steel tycoon, feels alienated from the working class that surrounds her. Mildred is kind of uh, those people who want to do a great amount of social work, and uh, you know, not for, not in order to sympathize with the workers, but in order to just satisfy the feel that yes, we are helping out the poor's, but they can never ever experience that uh, life of poverty themselves. even though mildred longs to understand people from the uh, other social classes so called lower social classes her aunt is hopeful that she will soon outgrow this phase aunt says ki uh, abhi naya naya josh hai poors ko help karne ka tumhare andar and this will be over mildred and her aunt are quite distinct as i told you na this scene is quite uh, different from the previous one they are quite distinct from the men who were shown in the first scene Mildred and her aunt, who are uh, very much affluent and well off, serve as uh, literary antagonists to Yang and the other firefighters that we got to see in the first scene. Now Mildred wants to go to these people and visit them, all the laborers, for the purpose of you know showing her sympathy to them and uh, trying to help them out so that she can satisfy her ego that I am in a better position and I can help them out. She agrees to be taken to the stockhold where the other men work by the ocean liner's second engineer. Mildred and the engineer who are dressed in bright white to show the contrast enter the stockhold just as Yang is yelling at the whistle blower and the other people, other laborers to work more, work harder and work faster. Mildred calls Yang a filthy beast. As soon as she sees, oh my God, these people are so filthy. Where, uh, where have I come? she nearly faints faints at the sight of these sweating people who are covered in coal dust yelling and holding a shovel here you can see the contrast completely dressed in white and completely dressed like a conventional labor fill the uh, if we say fill the and sweating profusely this is what mildred cannot tolerate she has a feel of disgust and calling gang a beast she goes from there you remember the scene one when gang was so proud that we are the one laborers are the one who run the ship but now uh, you know he is encountered the reality gang enters a trance like state as the result of mildred's reaction to him gang is attempting to be enticed out of the state by the other men all the laborers are discussing the kind of reaction that was given by mildred mildred called them specifically yang a 
beast. And Yang declares that now she will be the target of his vengeance. Before uh, the conclusion of the scene four, we come to know that Yang thinks that he is going to attack Mildred, but then is restrained by Paddy and Long. Yang abhi tak dunia ko apni nazaro se dekhte aaye. And when Yang and Long arrive on Fifth Avenue after getting off the ship in New York, Yang encounters multiple Mildreds. By this term, we mean that he gets to see so many people who uh, were astonished to see the filthy appearance of Yang and Long. Yang asks Long to take him back to the ship as he is surrounded by shops and clean streets that he has never seen before. He is not at all habitual of this kind of neat and clean environment. Long, on the other hand, keeps making Yang mad about Mildred and how she treated him on that ship. Yang tries to catch the attention of the wealthy people walking by in the middle of Fifth Avenue, and Yang receives no attention at all as the populace population over there continues with their day. Yang here, you know, is completely full of revenge, and he wants to attract everyone that they should also say something to him, and he should, you know, uh, get the chance to take out his anger. He tries to stop a person at Fifth Avenue from moving forward, from entering into a bus, and all he gets is a very civilized kind of reply, "Beg your pardon," kind of. Most people pass by. He keeps on being treated as if he does not exist, because Yang makes uh, a person miss his bus. Only one street gentleman seems to notice him, and Yang is detained and taken to jail for this. So Yang was trying to give trouble to many people on the street, and he is detained and he is taken to jail. In the jail, Yang is very disturbed to see the cage which is made up of steel. He thinks that he can bend the cage's steel bars with his brute force. This jail he is seeing at present as the representative of Mildred. The other inmates of the jail tell. Uh, yank about the opportunities that the industrial workers of the world union offers people like him once the guards have calmed him down so yank is calmed down by the guards and other people start telling him that uh, have you been tormented by these rich people there is uh, an organization world union of laborers which offers some kind of uh, resolution to people like you Yang believes that he has found his place in the workforce and co-workers who share his values. And Yang is aware that Mildred's father makes steel similar to the steel that made the cage in which he is entrapped at present. He says that he will not only get the rid of this cage, but he will get the rid of all the steel empire also who made it. Yang's crime was not that big. He is released from the prison after a month, and then he goes to that union about which he was told by his inmates in the jail. And uh, he becomes very aggressive when he goes there. I will use a bomb to destroy the steel empire. I'll use all the force to all the violence to destroy the steel empire. And Yang reveals that he would. To take down, uh, take down the powerful steel companies by force, by violence, by bomb, then by handling out pamphlet. This handling out out pamphlets and just propagating against the uh, big steel industries, big capitalist was not uh, enough for Yang. He wanted to use force, and for that viewpoint, for that violent viewpoints of him, the secretary throws uh, him out of his office. mistaking him for a government employee they feel that uh, yank is some kind of spy basically who wants to keep an eye on our activities so just like that he begins wandering on the streets of new york after meeting at the union office and he was thrown out of it you know that very sad very depressed he realizes that he will never be able to revolt sufficiently against the upper class for them to even notice him no one even wants to know ki what kind of tormentation what kind of feels i am going through yang comes across a zoo where he sees a gorilla locked in a cage and yang immediately feels connected to that particular ape you can say yang notices that the ape and he both have large chests and strong arms and hairy kind of appearance yang 
ट्राइज टू मेक गोरिला फ्री फ्रॉम द केज ही फील्स की मैं तो फ्री नहीं हो पाया कम से कम इसी को फ्री करवा देता हूँ ही फ्रीज दी गोरिला फ्रॉम इट्स केज टू मेक फ्रेंड्स विद द एप ही फील्स दैट ही विल बी यू नो वेरी मच ऑबलाइज इन थैंकफुल टू मी कि आई हैव मेड हिम फ्री इंस्टेड यंग इज अटैक बाय द गोरिला हु क्रशेस हिम एंड थ्रोस हिज बॉडी इनटू द केज वे यंग डाइज अल्टीमेटली अ वेरी पेसिमिस्टिक एंड वी सी हियर in his bid to belong to gorilla yang decides to take gorilla down to 5th avenue to show that he has discovered a real companion but the gorilla takes yang in his embrace and crushes him to death yang realizes that even this attempt to belong to find an identity has gone in vain he instantly collapses and dies in the cage when i read this play the heri a for the first time it did remind me of modern times by charlie chaplin if any one of you have watched it you can also find out the similarities that is a masterpiece and a mockery on industrialization and technological advancement you must go for it let us come back to the topic the heri apes overarching theme is the impact of industrialization and technological advancement on the worker on the mind and soul of the workers i'll say the human workers have become a machine as a result of industrialization whistles are blown whistles are used to turn the guys on and off and they are only required to perform the one activity they have been programmed to perform apne isi play mein dekh lijiye stockhol mein coal dalne ka kaam tha un workers ka nothing is nothing more than that हाउ मोनोटनस अगर हमें कोई पूरा दिन के लिए काम दे कि एक स्टॉक होल में बस कोल डालते रहना यूजिंग अ शॉवल हाउ बोरिंग दैट विल बी एंड दिस इज वॉट दीज लेबर्स वर डूइंग एंड अदर लेबर्स ऑल्सो आर नॉट एनी डिफरेंट सो वी कैन से कि किस तरीके का इम्पैक्ट आता होगा उनके दिमाग पर उनकी पर्सनैलिटी पर उनकी सोल पर जब वो एक ही काम को एज पर दी प्रोग्रामिंग करते रहते हैं विसल्स की आवाज़ पर ही रिएक्ट करते हैं उनकी लाइफ उनकी खुद की पर्सनैलिटी उनकी खुद की आइडेंटिटी कम्प्लीटली लॉस्ट हो जाती है बिकॉज ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रियल एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट्स so that is it for this part of the video i hope this whole detail will help you out to form a beautiful answer in your exams be it subjective or objective as i said in the beginning you may join the classes to cover the topics in detail you can click the link in description to get connected to us for your admission thanks for watching best of luck for exams and please do not forget to share and subscribe the channel